Dr. Brian Paris here with Genesis Nation, leveraging technology to help you build your dream practice. And I have the dream practice architect with me himself, the visionary <laughs> oh, wow. CEO of Genesis. Nope. That's, a, that's a big title, right? No pressure. Um, yeah. Not, not at all. Not at all. Dr. Brian Capra uh, here and my friend, colleague. And um, so, Brian, tell yes. me about leveraging technology to create the dream practice, because everyone has an individual dream of what their practice should look like. But how does technology fit? You know, because that's that's the common thread in all of these practices, right, is is leveraging that technology. So go for it. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, that's a broad topic. Uh, dream practice, everybody has a different dream, right? Um, different dreams. The most important thing I think first is that you define your dream. Um, your dream may be freedom. Your dream may be to be in your practice until you die. <laughs> you, you know, somehow actually seeing patients. Uh, your, your dream may be to build a, a practice where um, you can actually be a CEO and manager, your your dream may be to hire a CEO to run your practice or practices and own the business um, and work your way up to just owner and travel in Europe. I don't know. Your dream is your dream. Uh, it's not for me to decide. Um, but technology has to be a part of it no matter what. I think um, your dream is kind of like dessert. It's like the thing at the end. Right, you're driving to get to dessert, <laughs> um, or maybe it's a cocktail at the end, or a glass of wine, or whatever it is. But it's on the table, right? That's the that's the top level. Underneath that, the table itself, um, in my opinion, is no matter what your dream is to get to it, your patients have to have an amazing experience in your practice. Um, and when you think about a patient's experience you got to think of all the details um, that go into their experience and actually try to be empathetic to what they experience at every touch point in your practice, in their experience, coming through your practice, getting the care that you provide, whatever that might be. Um, and um, also having such an amazing experience that they want to pay a premium and refer their friends and family, bring literally their children to your practice, right? Refer their children. If you can build a practice where they're happy and comfortable referring their own child to see you, that should be your mentality. Because that's how I thought about it. That's when I, when we started Genesis and I, we talk about technology and get to single point management and all this stuff. I had an experience where um, in my own practice, uh, which was a good practice, it was successful, you know, but I had an experience where 100, we lost 100, year, 100 years ago, 125 years ago, <laughs> 150 now, yes. uh, thanks to chiropractic. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, um, but I had an experience where I, we lost a patient, you know, long story, but we lost a patient and it was our fault. And um, his name was Chris and he, you know, actually wound up committing suicide. Hmm. And when I looked at my technology, um, of course, process procedures, blah, 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 blah. How could we have retained Chris? Um, and we, we could have, th there was process procedures that got technology to help and that, that improved things, but still there was always a nagging issue for me with technology and I didn't have a solution. But ultimately, actually, I named my son Christian because of the, the situation. I thought if my, if that were my son, um, I would I would have been devastated mm. if uh, he had gone to my practice and that happened to him. So mm. uh, there's a longer story, obviously, in details to it. But um, when we're talking about building your dream. That was definitely that was my nightmare. Yeah. So. Um, you know, I got sort of lucky, right? I found some people that were building technology for other purposes for billing, actually, which we talked about before you and I, but um, I realized that it wasn't the, the, the technology for billing, it was the methodology, it was the, the way it was being used to um, in, uh, ch kind of change or revolutionize the way insurance billing companies worked and collections worked just in, in, in the insurance world. But I saw 
that the same type of technology could be used to optimize the patient experience. So the patient experience I think of as a table or a stool with three legs. Um, three things that always kind of support the patient's experience and they're kind of intertwined at all times, but uh, I think of them as the revenue in your practice. And we can talk a lot about revenue. It's not just insurance and it's not just cash. There's a lot of little things that are the patient's experience in revenue, not just your money in your bank. It's the patient's experience with how revenue, uh, how dollars are exchanged or how money is accounted for in your practice that actually affects their experience mm -hmm. in, your, in your business, right? So you have your, your revenue leg, um, you have your retention, that's their uh, you know, re retention of patients, right? Of, of their actual, you know, you talk about their scheduling and their visits and their care plans and all that stuff, examples. Uh, and then compliance. Compliance is a, a big, uh, an important leg of the stool because if, um, if you're not compliant and there's different types of compliance, right? There's HIPAA, there's documentation, there's PCI compliance, which is related to, you know, credit cards and stuff like that. There's all types of compliance, but if you're not compliant, um, there is compliance with data uh, requirements, right? Protecting your data, storing your data, making sure your data is not um, uh, easily hacked um, and lost. Um, and there's a lot of different parts to compliance. Any one of which, if you're not managing and doing it well and doing it efficiently and effectively, could cost you your practice. Yeah. Right. A lot of doctors think of compliance is documentation with insurance companies. And it's, there, yeah, that's one thing. And that's bad if you're not doing it because you, you might wind up auditing, having to pay some money back. God forbid you're, you're, you're not, you're, you know, you're billing fraudulently. That's a whole nother animal. But even if you are, are, are document, if you have a cash practice, you know, and you, and you don't document properly and a patient refers you to the board and they see that your, your license is on the line at that yep. point. Yep. Right. And that's a bigger problem than dealing with insurance companies, even though it's a nightmare to have to go through an audit. I understand. But you're talking about paying money back, maybe. Right. And as opposed to having your license on the line. So there's a whole bunch of things that go into compliance and it affects your patient experience. We've had ex examples where doctors um, prior to Genesis went through an audit and had letters sent to their patients mm. telling them your doctor is being audited. Well, what does a patient think about that? Do they think, well, he's being audited and I'm sure everything is fine. And maybe there's the no, documentation they, they only, wasn't they just- Only yeah, think the worst, that's they it. They think the worst, of course, yeah, this is yeah. their health care, right? Yeah, <laughs> so totally. they're not gonna like, they're not gonna take chances. They're gonna find another doctor that's not yep. being audited, right? Um, we had, there's, there's crazy stories out there. Anyway, compliance is a key uh, point to supporting this overriding patient experience. Well, we're we're going to keep we got to we got to keep this interview concise for the social media and and all of us that are ADD um, uh, here. So compliance definitely something that is more effective to work on it proactively versus reactively because stroking one of those checks is very painful. Um, and that was one of the stools. The other stool was uh, the legs on the stool. Yeah. Yes, the legs on the stool. Sorry, retention. <laughs> actually keeping your clients, teaching them lifestyle versus just educating, but actually having them refer their friends and their family and staying and understanding that chiropractic is a lifestyle and revenue, you know? Um, and I love what you said that it's the patient's experience of exchange of money for service, not just how much money you're bringing in the door, but to think about it that way really, I think, seats us in the community that you're serving versus just exchanging for service. And overall, the overarching theme of creating your dream practice is using empathy to create the best possible patient experience. Um, Absolutely. So, yeah. so I like I like the term radical empathy. So, you yeah, know, and okay. and just like, uh, like when I first started practicing, I used to be like, dude, all I hear is myself talking. I'm not asking any questions or listening. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. can't listen if you're talking. So we're going to dive way more into these topics. And again, we focused on a dream practice and the dream is your dream. And uh, we're going to help you leverage leverage technology so that you can create that dream practice. So thank you very much for this uh, short, quick, quick interview. And uh, we'll be catching you soon on Genesis Nation. Awesome. Thanks. Doug.